gonna be doing a buffalo chicken mac and cheese from scratch. Gonna give you a quick walk around on the new K outdoor oven right now. So take a look at the new K outdoor oven. I tell you what, I have always wanted the ability to be able to do things outside instead of having to bring them inside into my indoor oven. This thing is completely wood fired. You can use charcoal, like lump, whatever you want. Now this is some extra fire bricks right here, but that's the, uh, that's the, the fire box. Check that out. Take a look at the inside. Now you got three different levels on this. You can actually cook on the stones, like if you want to do pizza, you can cook on this level or you can cook on this level. I will more than likely be removing this one today. Along with this comes this stainless steel bacon dish. That thing is nice. Look at that. There's the wall. Here's that exterior. That's completely insulated all the way around. So what I really like about this is that you can obtain really high temperatures for like doing pizza or you can lower it way down just like your oven inside. Here is your air intake. Now if you look here at the top, you got two stacks. One I think is for the heat coming out of this. And yeah, that's for the heat. This is for the smoke. The smoke is routed around to where it exits out here. So you're not gonna be smoking meat in this. It's not a smoker. It is in fact an oven. And uh, that's exactly what I want. I mean, you don't want smoke on everything, you know, but just being able to cook outdoors and not necessarily want smoke at it. I've got plenty of smokers for that. Real important thing that you gotta do is you got to set the paint on this. And it says in the instructions that you might smell a burning paint smell for the first few hours. So I'm going to set this thing somewhere between 250 and 300. We're just going to let it heat up. We're going to burn all this paint and get it set. And then we're going to start cooking. We'll be back. I've got the oven warmed up to 275 degrees. The instructions really doesn't tell you how hot to get it. I think as long as it's like hot to the touch, and it is, that it's gonna like bake that paint in. So what I've got here is I've got some chicken thighs, and we're gonna start with that. All right, so go on with your favorite seasoning for chicken, and uh, this just happens to be one of my favorite. Gonna get both sides. Healthy little dose of this. Flip them over. Do the same thing. All right, that's looking good to me. All right, now what I've got here is just a little stainless pan with a uh, chicken rack in the bottom of it. Tell you what, that one opened up on me. Let me hit that with a little bit of seasoning. The New K outdoor oven is still riding about 300 degrees. I'm gonna place this chicken in here. I'm gonna ramp it up to probably about 325. I want it somewhere between 300 and 325. All right, so we open our door, and as you can see, no smoke. I'm gonna place our chicken in here. And what I really like about this is that clear glass that you can uh, see with. All right, we are cooking. All right, I'm showing about 175 to 180 internal temperature. And if you're wondering what I'm monitoring that with, I end up putting a meter wireless probe in this because of uh, being able to not only tell my internal temperature, but tell the temperature inside the meat. I mean, I'm sorry, inside the pit. 
187, 178, 192. We are more than done. And that's what I like about thigh meat. It's so forgiving. That's a little piece. It's up to 200. That's at 183. So what I'm going to do, look at the beautiful color on that. Just a little bit of char. I'm going to take this and we're going to place it over here on the cutting board and just let this cool off for the time being. So I'm preheating a pan here and into that I've got four ounces or a stick of butter going in. Let me cut this down just a tad to low. All right, now into that I'm pouring four ounces of Frank's Red Hot Sauce. 50-50 mixture on the Frank's Red Hot Sauce and the real butter. If you ever just want to toss some grilled wings into that, same recipe. I'm incorporating the Frank's Red Hot Sauce with the butter, and that's really all you want to do. You don't want to cook it. You don't want to simmer it. You just want to do that right there. We're going to turn the fire off. We're just going to let that hang out. Once I shred the meat, we're going to mix the two together. So I think our meat has cooled off enough to go ahead and pull this. And that's all you want to do, just break this into small pieces. Just break it up, shred it up the best way you can. You can even take a knife and cut it up. All right, so I've got it all shredded up, as you can see right here. And we're going to take and pour this sauce right over the top. Mix all that in really good. And that was just about the right amount, as you can see. Just got everything coated nice. It's not puddled up. It's not sitting in a lake of uh, hot sauce and butter. And guess what? It's that time of the year again. These flies are loving this. All right, I'm going to put some plastic wrap over this to keep the flies out. And we'll be back. So now, this is going to involve bacon. That's right, you heard it, bacon. I'm going to take about half of what I got here and we're just going to render this out. The rest of this will be used a little bit later on. Alright, so I'm making the topping for the mac and cheese. And like I said, first ingredient is bacon. And as you can tell, I'm not really using measurements. I'm just trying to visualize about how much I think I'll need. And that is a big part of cooking, be able to visualize instead of trying to follow a recipe to the T. You know, I mean, you could go a little less bacon, you can go a little bit more bacon, but uh, I, th I think this would be fine. So that's about the doneness that I'm looking for on this bacon. I'm gonna take some panko breadcrumbs. And I'm just eyeballing. I had to guess, I would say that's somewhere around a cup. I'm just going to toss that around, just let it absorb some of that bacon grease. All right, into that, I'm just going to put a little bit of parsley for flavor and color. That's looking just about like I'm looking for. Now, what I want to do at this point is transfer this into a dish, cover it with wrap. And I'm going to utilize the same pan to go ahead and saute some onions and some celery and more bacon. We'll start with the bacon. All right, so in with the rest of the bacon. We're going to do it the same way. I might uh, go a little bit more crispy, but I will add the onions once I get a little bit of grease rendering as well as the celery. And by the time that gets tender, then this bacon should be beyond crispy. So I've got a little bit of bacon grease right in there. I think I'm good enough to go ahead and put our onion and celery in. And if you're wondering why I'm adding celery, well, you know, it's kind of synonymous with the buffalo wing thing, the buffalo hot wings. So we're trying to mimic that flavor somewhat, you know, with the chicken, the celery. And I'm also going to be making a blue cheese topping for this for those that like blue cheese. Now, I love it. A lot of people don't, so that will be added on as your, you know, per serving, so to speak. I will not incorporate blue cheese into the cheese sauce or anything like that because a lot of people really don't like it. I've got a pot of water here. 
no exact amount there again i just know that's going to be enough for one pound of macaroni noodles now i haven't salted this yet so i'm going to add in some salt probably somewhere around a half a teaspoon you do want to salt your your water give that a quick stir good rolling bowl one pound of elbow macaroni going in i've got a timer set right here we're gonna go six minutes all right my timer alarm just went off the reason I'm going six minutes instead of what it uh, tells you to do on the box is because I want it al dente. This will continue to cook in the oven as it's baking. So I'm going to take and we're going to strain this. We're going to put it in a separate container. By the time this is all said and done, I would have went through a lot of containers, I assure you. <laughs> I'm doing something a little different than what I normally do. Normally I make like a bechamel and then turn it into a Mornay sauce using a roux with flour. Well, today I'm doing something totally different because this is going to deliver a totally smooth, totally silky outcome without having to use the flour and the milk and all that stuff. So what I've got here, and you may have heard of this, this is sodium citrate. Sodium citrate is derived from citric acid, which is derived from citrus fruit. And it's already used in a lot of things that you currently eat or drink, like sodas, uh, wine. They use it in cheese-making processes. It's, uh, it's, it's used a lot if you go to looking through your, your labels. So anyway, for every 8 ounces of cheese, and I'm putting roughly 16 ounces of cheese to start, you want to put a half a teaspoon of this per 8 ounces. So I'm putting basically a whole teaspoon. So there's a half... And if you're wondering what it does, it's an emulsifier. It will emulsify the cheeses that uh, starts running out of fat. It stops that from happening. It stops the fats from rendering out of the cheese. It holds everything, it binds everything together to, to create a real silky smooth sauce. Now into that, you can use water, you can use milk. I'm using beer. For this part, I'll be doing blue cheese a little later, and yeah, you can use that on cheeses that don't typically melt well. So I'm adding in the beer, and we're going to fire this burner up. We've got a block, eight ounces, I think it's actually seven ounces of a smoked Gouda. I've got eight ounces of a white mild cheddar. And uh, a little later, I'll be adding some Parmesan as well. I just killed the fire on the celery, onion, and bacon. That's looking really good, smelling insane all right i'm already beginning to simmer in this little pot so in goes the cheese you don't want to dump it all at once you just want to start with some get that melted and incorporated and from there add the rest that's pretty much half of it Now, if you Google this sodium citrate, some people say you have to use an immersion blender. That's not true. All you need is a spoon. All you got to do is, is do what I'm doing right here, and we're already getting a nice consistency. But we're about halfway there. Let's go ahead and add the rest of this cheese. I don't know how well you can see that, but that's turning out really creamy, really smooth, and I just put that in there. Look at that. That's just that's just like a queso, man. That is so smooth. And I still don't have it fully incorporated. That is perfect. All right, I'm going to cut my fire off. I'm going to take my spoon out. We're going to pour this cheese sauce right over into this mac. And that is looking good. If you want a little bit thicker, don't use as much liquid. I used about a half a cup of beer and one teaspoon of the sodium citrate. So first thing we want to do is give all that a really good mix. But I'm not done yet. I went in with about a quarter cup of beer and I'm only using a half a teaspoon because I'm only going in this time with like eight ounces of Parmesan. We are ready to roll. All right, so I've only got six ounces. I thought this was eight. It's just going to have to work. I'm going to stir this around. I added more beer 
and you can play it by ear. You know, if it's too thick, just add a little bit more beer, and that's looking pretty good right there. Have all this a really good mix. Look how cheesy that is. This is going to be killer. Let's go ahead and add in this bacon, the celery, and the onion. As well as the chicken. Let me hold right there and see how it looks. There again, I'm playing this all by ear. So if you can follow this recipe basically the way I did it, then uh, you should have success. But we're not done yet. Oh, hey, come on. Let's just throw all that meat in there. I think we're doing good. That's what I'm talking about. Put that sauce in there, too. Let's transfer that into this Pyrex dish. Now, normally I would not use a Pyrex in like a grill or smoker, but keep in mind, this is an oven. The fire and everything's hidden. The smoke's hidden. It, nothing's getting inside this. So it's completely safe, just as safe as putting it in your oven indoors. You know this is gonna be good. All right, so on with this topping. The bacon, the panko bread crumbs, the parsley. Now after I put this in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and make the blue cheese sauce. So that looks good. Let's go ahead in. We are running at uh, 375 degrees, which I think is gonna be ideal. Like I said, everything is done. We're basically wanting to brown the top. And we go. So I start off with too much milk. If you ever do this with blue cheese, put less milk. That sort of citrate is probably something you're just going to have to play with, experiment with. What I've done is I just reduced it to where I can get my thickness. And it's piping hot, so I'm going to cut the fire off. But as you can see, it's well blended. It's not separated. There's not an oil slick on top. I just look. I think it's done. We're going to pull it out. It's nice and bubbly. Be right back. Oh, man, yeah. That sure looks good. Got some nice little crispies on there. All right, so I've got a bowl right here. I'm fixing to get me a helping of this. I'm going to drizzle some of this blue cheese on top of it. I'll be right back. All right, so there's my bowl. And the blue cheese definitely thickened up after cooling off. But I think it's just right. Have you ever seen like a blue cheese queso? Man, look at that. Well, I tell you what, that's a lot of steps to make mac and cheese. But man, I know this is going to be killer. We're fixing to find out. So I'm just going to go right on in. By the way, I had to turn that blue cheese into the macaroni for taking pictures because as good as it's going to be, it didn't look real appealing on a thumbnail. So here we go. Oh man, perfect amount of saltiness. And if you notice, I didn't add no salt to nothing other than the water for the pasta because the cheese already, you know, has salts in it. Oh God, that's good. The bacon, the bacon is salty. So it's just the right amount of salt. Fantastic flavor. It just screams buffalo chicken. Man, this is fantastic. This is actually a full-blown meal, but this would make a fantastic sud. Mm. Oh, this will be made again, I promise you. Well, look, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. You have got to try this. Let me know what you think. I hope you learned a few things on this video. Until next time, Smokey Ribs.